Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous sessions, we have observed the error detection and correction. In this session, we are going to learn the problem of encoding in error detection and correction. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, at first, we will acquire the understanding of the problem of incorporation of error detection and correction to binary codes. Basically, we will observe how simple binary codes are incapable for incorporation of error detection or correction. Thereafter, we will observe the solution provided by the use of parity bit. Now, in the previous session, when we discussed about error correction, we observed the 1-bit error correction code, the 2-bit error correction code, and the 3-bit error correction code. Now, observe carefully, in order to correct more error bits, we are supposed to increase the distance between the two valid patterns. And as a result, the number of patterns which are going to be left as invalid are going to increase. Thus, given a code, we will be able to use only a few number of patterns as valid codes. Now, if you remember, during the session error detection, while we were discussing about the prerequisite of error detection or correction, we observed, if we use the 8421 codes as our error detection or correction code, say, the sender sends this valid pattern 0011 to the receiver. However, if the receiver receives this code 0001, since it is another valid BCD pattern, it will be difficult for the receiver to understand whether it is an erroneous code or not. Now, in that session, I also remember telling you that 8 foot 2 1 codes cannot be used for error detection or correction. Today, we will observe the problem of using BCD or 8 foot 2 1 for error detection. So, what we will do, we will try to assign all these 9 valid BCD patterns to all the symbols of decimal that is 0 to 9. Now, if you remember, for t-bit error detection, the Hamming distance is at least t plus 1. Now, say we are trying to use this 8 foot 2 1 or BCD patterns for the detection of 1-bit errors. Therefore, for 1-bit error detection, the Hamming distance should at least be 1 plus 1, that is eventually 2. So, what is meant by this is, if we assign a particular pattern to a specific symbol, since we are trying to incorporate 1-bit error detection, therefore all the unit distance pattern from this should be considered as invalid. So, if we assign 4 zeros to the symbol 0, in that case, all the patterns which are unit distant from 0, 0, 0, 0 will be treated as invalid. Now, considering 4 zeros, the unit distant patterns are 0001, 0010, 0100 and 1000. Since these all are unit distant from four zeros, so these will be treated as invalid. And this is the reason why we will have to omit them from our list. Now, after the assignment of 0000, 0, 0, 0 to the decimal symbol 0, the next valid pattern can be 0011. So, let's assign this to the next symbol, that is 1. Now, remember, we are looking for one bit error detection code. Therefore, we will have to judge this particular pattern as well for its unit distance codes. So, for 0011, if we toggle this particular bit, we will end up having 0001. Then again, if we toggle the LSB, we will end up having 0010. Now, apart from these two bits, if we toggle this bit, we will acquire 0111. And finally, if we toggle the MSB, we will acquire 1011. Now, if you observe, this is an invalid BCD code. Basically, anything bigger than 1001 is supposed to be treated as invalid BCD code. And therefore, we can't really use it. Now, from these three codes, if you observe, we already have invalidated 0001 and 0010 as they were already unit distant from four zeros. So, finally, 0011, which is unit distant from 0011, should be omitted now. Now observe, in this particular list of patterns, the next pattern which can be assigned as a valid code to a symbol is 0101. So let's assign that to the next symbol, 2. Now once again, we will have to judge this particular pattern and look for its unit distance code so that we can make them invalid. So let's do that. 
Now in 0, 1, 0, 1, if we toggle this particular bit, we will end up having 0, 0, 001. Toggling the LSB, we will acquire 0, 1, 0, 0. Now these two are already invalidated due to the assignment of four zeros to the symbol 0. Now coming to this particular bit, if we toggle it, we will acquire 0, 0, 1. See, this one also got invalidated due to the assignment of the pattern 0, 0, 1, 1 to the symbol 1. Now finally, if we toggle this particular bit, we will acquire 1101. Now this is again an invalid BCD code, so we can't really use it. Now the next pattern which can be assigned to the next symbol is 0110. So let's assign to the next symbol that is 3. Now again we will perform the same drill, that is we will invalidate all the unit distance patterns of 0110. Now if we toggle this particular bit, we will get 0010. Toggling this bit, we acquire 0100. Then again, if we toggle the LSB, we will end up having 0111. Observe 0010, 0100, and 0111 already are invalidated due to the assignment of all these three. Now, if we toggle the MSB, we will acquire 1110. Now this is again an invalid BCD code, so we won't be able to use it. Now coming back to the list, if you observe, 1001 is the only pattern left. So if we assign this to the next symbol, that is 4, that will be our last assignment. Now just for the sake of uniformity, let's also find out all the unit distance code of 1001. Now for 1001, the unit distance codes are 0001, 1000, 1011 and 1101. Now observe, 0001 and 1000 are already invalidated. Now coming to these pattern, 1011 and 1101, these two are invalid BCD patterns, so we won't be able to use them. So basically, if we want to use 8421 or BCD for one bit error detection, we can only assign the valid patterns to the half of the symbols that is 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 of decimal. Now for the other half, we don't really have any more patterns to assign. So we can draw a conclusion to this discussion by stating that in order to incorporate error detection and correction capability to a code, the code must have enough number of patterns available so that even after assigning some of those patterns as valid and leaving out the rest as invalid, our need should be fulfilled. Now this can only be achieved by increasing the number of patterns in the code. Now if you remember, we also studied about the grey codes, didn't we? Alongside being non varied reflexive, cyclic, grey codes are also unit distant. Observe the subsequent patterns, 000 and 001 are unit distant and that is also the case for 001 and 011. And if you notice carefully, that is also the case for all the remaining patterns which can be acquired using 3-bit places in case of grey codes. But the grey codes being unit distant doesn't solve our problem altogether. Because if you remember, for 1-bit error detection, the Hamming distance should at least be 2, which in this case is unit or 1. But worry not, 1-bit error detection can be achieved with the help of this grey code and if we use alongside something called the parity bit. Now what is parity bit? It is an extra bit which is appended to the previously provided unit distance code. And its value is determined with respect to the number of ones in the code. Now basically there are two different parities. One is called the even parity, where if the number of ones in the code is odd, we are going to set the parity to one. Try to understand this logic. The name of it is even parity, right? Now if the number of ones in the code is odd, setting the parity to 1, we are actually making the number of ones in the code even. And hence the name, even parity. Coming to the second one, it's odd parity. And as you guessed it correctly, here if the number of ones in the code is even, then we are going to set the parity to 1. Basically, if the numbers of ones in the code is even, Setting the parity to 1, we are making the number of 1's in the code altogether an odd number and hence the name odd parity.
Now I just claimed that along with the parity bit and the unit distance code which is already provided to us, we actually can handle single bit error detection. So let me illustrate that. Say we have all the unit distance gray code acquired using 3 bit places. Now alongside this unit distance code, let's use even parity and say we are going to append the even parity by the end of the code. Now observe the rule for even parity. If the number of ones in the code is odd, then we are going to set the parity to 1. So what about triple zero? No ones are there. So it's already even, right? So therefore, we will set the even parity to 0. Now coming to double zero one, observe, we have only a single one. So since the number of ones is odd, we are going to set the parity as 1. Observe, now as a whole the code has even number of ones. Now coming to zero double one, the number of ones in the code is already even, so the parity bit will be reset to 0. Coming to 0, 1, 0, the number of ones in the code is odd, that is 1, so the even parity will be set to 1. Similarly, for 1, 1, 0, the number of ones in the code is already even, so the even parity will be 0. Coming to triple 1, here the number of ones is odd, right? So the parity bit will be 1. Then again, for 1, 0, 1, the number of ones in this particular code is already even, so we are to reset the parity bit to 0. Finally, for 1 double 0, since the number of 1 in this particular code is odd, we are going to set the parity bit to 1. Now notice the distance between the subsequent patterns. 0, 0, 0, 0 and 0, 0, 1, 1 are not unit distance now, they have the distance of 2. Coming to 0, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 1, 1, 0, observe, they are also of distance 2. And the same can be stated for all the rest of the codes. So using gray codes alongside the even parity, the error detection of one bit errors can be handled. Now I just showed you the incorporation of gray code and even parity. How about you all try out as a homework problem the incorporation of gray code and odd parity. So in this session, we first tried to acquire the understanding of the problem of incorporation of error detection and correction to binary codes and thereafter we observed the solution which is provided by the use of parity bit alongside the unit distant gray code. Alright people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe the Hamming code for one bit error correction. So I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.